Well, hi everybody, this is Lena here, and um, I used to say, and welcome to Lena's life, whatever, but it's been a very long time since um, I've done a video by myself. I don't really know what to do anymore. Mark, can you <laughs> help me out here? No, um, I wanted to do a video, uh, Mark did one about hormones and, you know, having been off of them now for, I think it was late July? Uh, beginning of July. July 3rd. That's when we stopped? Mm -hmm. Wow. It's been that long. It's been since July 3rd that we stopped taking hormones. Um, I remember the day, and I still have yet to put it in the episode for Gypsy Blue Nomads that we've been doing, um, talking about our trip out to, uh, well, everywhere we went, but um, we got to a point where in Oregon, just before we crossed the border into California, I was done, I was ready, Mark was ready, you know, I mean, we just took it to a, that was a welcome center or something in Oregon, and we just took the hormones I had you know, a bunch of injections yet yet to take. I had probably, I think I had like a year's worth more of, of um, estradiol that I was, I was being injected with. And um, I was like, this is it. You know, this is, this is not a good thing to do, you know. So we ended up throwing it in the trash and um, getting rid of it. Uh, he threw away his testosterone and I threw away my estrogen. And you know, looking back at it now, I know that it's something that, you know, people want to be able to do if they're going to transition and they want to get on the hormones and everything. But honestly, I just, I look back at it and I go, what did it really do? You know, I mean, I don't, I don't really know what it actually did. You know, it didn't, it didn't do much for me. I just, you know, I, I was, I was expecting something way more. And it was really kind of a disappointing experience. At first, I was given all kinds of stuff. I was given uh, injections every other week of estradiol. I was given... Uh, progesterone. I was given finasteride. I was given 200 milligrams of spiro. I mean, it, it and it was every day. Four milligrams, four like uh, milligrams of estradiol. You know, later I went to taking every single day after I stopped doing the injections. And you know, honestly, I don't really know why they recommend cross-sex hormones um, to people who are transitioning. I know that, you know, in a younger generation, a younger crowd, um, obviously hormones work more uh, the younger you are, but you got to ask yourself, do they really? Because um, I see Jazz Jennings, and if you've seen any pictures of Jazz Jennings lately, you see they're still as tortured of a human as they've ever been. And now with the added um, burden, really, of having breasts and um, of having um, mental depression and issues um, with their body. Uh, but this isn't about that. This is about hormones, what they do, what they don't do. Uh, you know, it's not really trying to, you know, point anything else out. But I came to the whole concept of hormones in a way that I wanted things to happen. Like any person who's, you know, male to female, whatever. It's impossible. By the way, male to female. It's just male to more feminine, maybe. Um, but... It was one of those things where it was just a dream. And um, for me, it ended up being more of a place.
placebo effect. I mean, when I was on it, I felt like, you know, I was getting the female hormone and I was excited to be receiving these types of treatments and stuff. And I literally thought that I was going to cross some magical gender barrier marker in life that exists somewhere in, in space and time, but never quite happened, you know. And that's the thing about hormones is that they are not even um, recommended, you know, these hormones for natal women, let alone natal men, you know. Um, Off-label use is what it is, off-label use. Um, it's not something that's been recognized by the medical community, although the endocrine society is now recommending, you know, puberty blockers for young kids, and, you know, they're recommending cross-sex hormones even at a younger age than 16. Uh, they're also recommending uh, gonadal surgeries and things like that for both males and females but the reality is that they don't know what they're talking about they don't know the dangers that lie uh, in doing such things i i look at facebook pages and stuff of old friends and what i see more often than not and whether it's a person who was born male or a person born female more often than not, I see a massive amount of premature aging going on and a dryness of skin, a dryness of hair. Um, people, you know, they just, they change. Yeah, but they don't change for the better. And it doesn't matter if you're young, if you're old, it hits everyone. And, you know, my message to any any young transitioner out there is just look at the pages of uh, your older trans sisters and see how they have turned out and tell me if that's how you want to be in the future if you're you know if you have any vanity at all um, which many do um, most do all do in the trans community um, you won't like the changes that will take place with your body as you age. I mean, yes, there is a window. There's a wonderful, you know, elated moment of time when you can and be and everything else and enjoy it. But, you know, cross-sex hormones like estrogen are endocrine disruptors in the male body and they are endocrine disruptors in, in big dosages to natal women. So if they don't recommend these types of treatments to women who are going through menopause, who need it, really, to balance out their hormones, you know, and it's experimental at best, then what makes us think that a lifelong surgical procedure is going to do anything for, you know, I mean... Um, medical procedures are going to do anything on any of these prescriptions in the long run because you know for me what I noticed more so than anything else was a huge placebo effect and ever since now that I've been off and it's been you know it was July 3rd when we stopped um, I feel very balanced I feel very relaxed I feel very in control of my of thoughts and emotions, and although I do go through spout, you know, um, bouts of depression at times, and, and um, I still struggle with gender dysphoria to a certain degree, and you know, I um, I struggle. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not something that's not apparent to me, but I know that instead of helping the situation with regards to my gender dysphoria. I think that estrogen was worsening it. It was making it more difficult to cope with things. Um, I stopped taking Spiro, which I recommend to anyone who's been given this type of prescription, a diuretic that's basically a cardiac 
heart medicine that was repurposed to be used in the trans community for people that were dealing with not wanting, you know, androgen, you know, issues and whatnot, they call it. But it doesn't do much other than to raise cortisol levels and to cause major, major emotional and mental issues. It's a very dangerous drug. It's something that you should not ever touch. I mean, don't even touch this stuff. Spiro is, is absolutely lethal to the male body. And think about it this way. You suppress anything in your life. And that's what it is. It's a suppressor of androgen, right? That's what they call it, an androgen blocker. That means that androgen is trying to balance out your body and make it balanced. Homeostasis is not able to be achieved when you're constantly repressing it. So you constantly push it down like a volcano. Eventually, something's going to give. And if you don't take care of it, it's going to cause you other problems. So, you know, just like fats and oils don't mix and when we're eating you know we're both mark and i are both vegan and stuff and we we eat a lot of carbs and everything but when you mix fats and oils that's a toxic combination for your health and you think about it you mix spiro and you mix estrogen it's like mixing fats and oils it's just a very lethal and dangerous situation that you have for yourself and when you add any kind of gonadal surgery whether it be a vaginoplasty whether it be a um an an orchiectomy you are basically sentencing your body to a lifetime of illness and disease that's just the truth i mean i'm not going to sugarcoat it uh we're going to do a show here in you know the next few weeks about how one young transitioner had the surgery they hate it they call it their expensive lamborghini that they have to maintain because it's always having issues and the real truth of the matter is 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 this a vagina is a female organ that is connected to the female body and it is equipped and wonderfully and beautifully remarkably made by God in a way that it is able to maintain itself. You don't need douches and all these other things that the male body would require for an orifice, which they would call a vagina, um, a, basically a wound that wants to heal itself. That's all the body sees. It doesn't see a vagina. I don't mean to blow anyone's bubble. I don't want you to think that, oh, Lynn is being insensitive to the trans community. Um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just being honest with you. And I'm seeing so many of, of these people who have transitioned and they have the surgery or, you know, they've had it for years, whether decades, whether months, it doesn't matter because what happens is common illness, and disease and that is the problem so by shutting down those gonads you basically kind of like taken a part of your body out from you that can't function anymore it can't work for you anymore I can't bring you back to a state of wholeness and wellness so now what you're running on is like you know say you're a eight-cylinder car now you're like a two-cylinder car, and you don't have the ability to keep your body functioning optimally anymore. And what I'm saying is that people are falling apart, literally falling apart health-wise. And I just, you know, my heart goes out to them because I don't think they realize the damage that they've done. I mean, these young transitioners who get their vaginoplasty at 20 or 25 or whatever they are setting themselves up for a lifetime a lifetime of issues and they're not feminine issues 
They're male body related issues that will, not when, but they will manifest themselves throughout their lifetime. And, you know, even worse is what's happening to children. Mark and I have been on the bandwagon about talking about the dangers of, you know, puberty blockers since 2015. Uh, we made videos back in May that ostracizes from the trans community, but we stand and in, in still believe that these puberty blockers are absolutely lethal and dangerous to the bodies of young children. It's, it's to anybody, you know, I mean, if you can avoid taking medicine at all, I mean, and I mean ibuprofen, I mean acetaminophen, I mean anything, you're doing yourself a great favor because you're adding years to your life, you know, and the effects of cross-sex hormones on the male body is not good. And you know what? Actually, I feel like I feel even more health, healthy mentally than I ever did when I was on them. And I actually, you know, I mean, they talk about, oh, and the effects wear off, and then you start masculinizing again, and blah, blah, blah. And you know, honestly, I feel really good about myself. Um, I did cut my hair, so this is a wig, but I feel really good about myself. I'm really happy with where my body's taking me. Um, Mark's been feeding me well. He's the most amazing chef, nutritionist, slash um, lover, um, husband, wife, uh, whatever you want to call it. We are so, I am so blessed. You know, I, I can't say enough. And um, I'm very, very happy with where my body is right now. Um, I know before I didn't really have a clue on how to take care of myself and now because of because of mark it's just it's it's opened up a world for me to understand how the body works and you know the only pro the progression that i had to take in my life was to let go of the cross-sex hormones because i remember when i when i detransitioned last year and i got my first dosage of estradiol um the injection went in and it was like oh my god i like almost like blacked out i did black out i think and i was not my body was not happy with me although my mind wanted it my body was like no 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 and you know the truth is if you want to express and live and be and just you know be who you are you know if that be more feminine, more masculine, um, whether you like to wear pants or dresses or makeup or not, I mean, you know, that's your right as a human being to be as expressive as you want to. But when that expression crosses over into destroying the very vital parts of your human body, and it requires for you to think that surgically removing something that was naturally put there by the creator by god um to be a part of your body for your health that's when you cross the line you know i mean the surgeries are just too much breaking your face too much you know i mean taking cross-sex hormones too much so naturally living your life expressing as you want to, being yourself, that's way more exciting and fulfilling as a human being than, you know, putting your life in the hands of an endocrinologist or a surgeon or pharmaceuticals or, you know, unnecessary destruction. So I just want to say, that you know natural living is the way to go you know i mean you you want to express you want to be do and be
But don't hurt yourself. Don't injure your life because you're young and you think that this is your gateway to getting what you want in life. And you know, but you know what? Beauty fades. Beauty is fleeting. You know, I remember when I first was considering transitioning and I was already off the wagon, off the deep end with it. I talked to a guy who actually um, I knew back in, in school and he was a pastor and we met at a rest area in, in South Carolina on my way to Charleston to do a job and he was like, you know, what really happens is that, you know, there's always a beautiful side to evil. You know, there's always a beautiful side or else it wouldn't be appealing. Why would you want it if it wasn't beautiful? And there's always a time when you're going to enjoy what you've done. But, you know, at the end of the day, you have to pay. And unfortunately, what happens is your body is the price, is what is required. And a lot of times your life is what is required. And um, I just don't want people to put false hope in things that have no eternal meaning. You know, our bodies are what they are. We've had them since we were born with them and we're gonna die with them. And when they excavate our bones um, in the future, if they ever did that, here lies so-and-so, a male body. Here lies so-and-so. Doesn't matter if the FTM had massive, you know, manliness to them and, you know, muscles and whatever you all want to you know, make as a point for being man manly and masculine. And they're going to go, here lies a woman, woman's bones woman's skull so express be you but don't hurt yourself don't hurt others I hurt so many people in my life so many people one of the quotes that I remember my now ex saying was that I will someday emotionally understand this but my heart will never understand this I mean, you late transitioners out there who think that you've got the world at your fingertips and that you've got all your surgeries planned and all the things in line for your wonderful project that you have in your garage, which is your body, not your car anymore. It's now your big breasts and it's your big surgeries and it's your big this and that's. Um, you know, know that the project is never gonna be done you're never going to be fulfilled. You're going to be chasing your tail from here to there. And then you're going to be ridiculed and someone's going to say something and then you're going to want to do something else. And then it's like a never ending battle with yourself. And you wonderful young transitioners that have the world at your fingertips as well. And you're beautiful and gorgeous and everything. Just realize that beauty doesn't last forever. You're going to someday get to your, you know, 50s. And if you do, I mean, some of you who take puberty blockers, we don't know what's going to happen with you. We don't know what the ramifications are, what cancers creep up and grow inside the body when one takes puberty blockers or estrogen at the age of 13 or something ridiculous or has their, you know, you know, gonads cut out when they're 16 or 18. We, we don't know. So you're still a working project. We don't, you're an experiment that pharma and the medical community is still working on. So the book's still being, being written on you guys, but the late transitioners, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Just be you, you know, just be you. And don't take hostages like I did. Don't ramrod it and make yourself the center of the universe because what's what ends up happening is that the universe becomes mighty small because you are the only one living in it now 
now that you've pretty much blown everyone else out of your universe. I'm lucky. I'm grateful. Um, Mark and I have made our mistakes. We've done what we've done, and you know, but by the grace of God, we found each other and we love each other. And uh, we'll continue to talk about these things and we'll continue to raise these issues and we'll continue to push, you know, natural expression over transition any day. So I hope you guys have a nice day. Thanks for listening. I don't know, um, this went kind of long, but it's what my heart had to say. So see you guys later.